Welcome to Whiskey's a Journey. My name is Peter Fasciano. Today, we're sticking around in the Middleton Distillery. In fact, we're going to be in Middleton Distillery for the next one, two, three, four, five, six, six weeks. So stay tuned for that. We're going to be taking a look at the Powers John Lane 12-year-old. Let's go ahead and pour it, nose it, taste it, talk about it. And if you guys stick around, I'm going to give a score for this at the end. <laughs> Vanilla. I don't even have to bring it up to my nose. I can smell it. And sure enough, vanilla, and I get a little bit of the sherry notes. Lighter fruits, I wouldn't say that this is kind of like a PX sherry finish, but there are lighter raisin notes in here, not those deep, dark figs, plums, and dark sugary raisins. It's lighter on the nose than the PX. It's very fragrant, very nice. All right, before I get this on the palate and give you any more notes, this is 46% ABV, non-chill filtered, triple distilled, aged in ex-bourbon and sherry casks. As I just mentioned, distilled in Middleton, 750 milliliter bottle, and I paid $65 for this, $65.99, and this one is staying pretty close to that $65 mark. I looked it up and this is now going for 67. And if I didn't mention it, this is a single pot still Irish whiskey. Let's go ahead and get it on the palate. On the palate, I would say that more of the ex-bourbon casks are coming through rather than the sherry. I get a good amount of honey and vanilla, more vanilla than honey. That pot still spices there. It's a little bit more on the peppery side. And again, I don't know what a shortbread biscuit tastes like. I equate this more towards those vanilla wafers. That's definitely in here. Light, fruity, and crisp. In the past, I have gotten some sulfur notes out of a sherried finished whiskey. And I gotta tell you, when this was a brand new bottle, those sulfur notes were there. But after the first two or three pours out of this, that sulfur note never showed up again. There's a really good amount of sweetness here and it's balanced really well with the spice. Let's get that second sip down see if I can pull anything else out of this. Yeah, this is really good, really good. Definitely vanilla forward a very subtle amount of sherry in here. And it's my understanding that they're using more ex bourbon than they are sherry when they mature this. And I think that's very evident with the vanilla and honey notes that are coming through here. If you're looking for the sherry notes, they will be there, but they're tucked nicely behind the vanilla and the honey from the ex bourbon. I don't have a high amount of barrel tannin on the side of my tongue like I mostly get on that second sip. This one is very laid back as far as oak tannins go. The entire experience from the arrival to mid palate and finish is very soft. It's a very nice, well-rounded whiskey. Let's get that third sip down, let it sit on the palate, and let me give you a little bit of a brief history of Irish whiskey. So let's get that third sip. All right, as this is settling in, just wanna let you guys know the history of Irish whiskey I pulled from, from barley to Blarney. And I'm gonna to touch on some peaks and valleys and then peaks again of Irish whiskey. I am gonna be looking at my notes because there's a whole lot of dates here, so bear with me. We're gonna start out in the 1700s. In the 1700s, there were about 1,200 Irish distilleries, some legal, some illegal. I would say the Irish whiskey market was, was booming at the time, and a lot of Irish people were drinking whiskeys, which caused a problem because in 1838, a national temperance movement started, and within five year period, there were over half of the population of Ireland swore off drinking of alcohol. And that put a big dent in the Irish whiskey sales. Skipping ahead here to a time period from 1960 to 1930. During this time, Aeneas Coffee's coffee still was doing really well in Scotland. We had this overabundance of Irish whiskey, which caused the prices to collapse in Ireland. On top of that, there was the Irish Civil War and prohibition in the United States all of which caused this whole collapse of the Irish market. And then after World War II, 1945, the Americans came home to the United States with a taste for scotch instead of Irish whiskey. But in the meantime, in 1943, I believe it was in the United States that a bartender, Joe Sheridan, made an Irish coffee for the first time. And that kind of sort of took off. And then the Irish whiskey was kind of on the rebound. And it took quite a while because from 1950 to 1960, scotch was king in the United States. And then around 1975, all of the existing Irish distilleries, with the exception of maybe one or two, Bushmills and another distillery, all kind of came under the same umbrella, which is the IDL, Irish Distilleries Limited. And they ended up building this state-of-the-art distillery in Middleton, County Cork. 
And from that point forward, the Irish whiskey started to expand a little bit more. And by 1990 to 2000, the demand for Irish whiskey really hit a boom. And then from 2000 until the present, Irish whiskey is the fastest growing spirit in the world. And Ireland has gone from four distilleries to over 40 in the last 10 years. And I'm gonna leave a link in the description to a map of all the different names of the distilleries. I think you guys should check that out. It's pretty interesting. And again, the majority of that information, if not all of it, came from this book. If you're interested in Irish whiskey, I would highly suggest reading that book. I'll leave a link in the description below. So that's kind of the rise and fall and rise again of Irish whiskey. And to tell you the truth, Irish whiskey for myself and my brother-in-law was the, the thing that actually got us into tasting and enjoying whiskey. Let's go ahead and get that last sip down and we'll move on to the score. That last sip is very consistent with my first one. I think this is a very well-balanced vanilla, honey, and slight sherry notes. I like the ABV. I definitely like the price. And this is also one of my favorite Irish whiskeys. I wouldn't put it up there at the very, very top, but it's very, very close. And if you guys are new here, my rating system is out of five stars. I'm not gonna rate this as high as the Redbreast 12 cast strength, but it is gonna be up there. And I'm going to give this one 3.95 stars. It's an easy sipper, it's well-rounded, it's a good price, it's a good proof point. You got a good amount of age here. And if you do like more of those ex-bourbon notes rather than the sherry side of things, I think this would be a very good single pot still Irish whiskey to reach for. And if we're talking about reaching for something, why don't you guys do me a favor and reach down there and click on that subscribe button. If you're not subscribed to the channel already and you like this information, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Also do all those things that YouTubers ask you to do share, comment down below, turn on that bell notification because I go live with videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. That's where I'm gonna leave it this week. I hope you guys are enjoying your journey. Let me know if you guys have any experience with Powers John's Lane 12 year. And with all that being said, we'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.